So I brought some blood spatter layers, uh, and the idea behind it would be to put some blood spatter in the in the table, maybe some blood spatter in the actual photo frame, and some of it in the actual chair as well. We probably don't need to make all three of them because they are all with similar techniques and we do not want to spend ages doing all of them. So I'm going to start by doing the blood in the table and then we'll see where we are. So go ahead and pick up the blood01.psd and copy it and, and use control or command X. That section will be, of course, the next layer that we're going to use. So again, let's just copy the scene scan line and also the merge node, copy it and then paste it a little lower and connect it into the mainstream, connect the camera into the camera stream so just like before, like I said we, we now have a system so we just keep putting layer, layer, layer plug in, plug in, plug in. So we always merge, merge, merge. We keep one single stream with everything just to make it a little tidy and also to fully understand what's going on. Um, again, in the blood splatter, I'm just going to make it a little more room because I'm probably going to use the blood splatter uh, several times. So I'm going to bring in the table card. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it into my new section which is the table blood. I'm now going to also select it and use a backdrop again to basically label what section of the comp this is. I am going to again select my Photoshop file use a shuffle using the tab function use a shuffle. In the shuffle option I'm gonna use the uh, we have a, a lot of different textures that I brought in for you guys to use so you can feel free to experiment with them um, the one we are going to use right now is the splatter. So I'm going to select the splatter out of my uh, shuffle and I'm going to bring in the pre-molt just like before. I'm going to pipe it into the viewer. I'm going to switch to RGB. So that's the splatter, the blood splatter we have. Uh, I am going to connect it into my table blood card, but we're going to tweak the card in a few seconds. So the difference between this setup that I did before is that before we used to have two cards and we transfer the data from one card to another. But by now you probably understood that you can just select the original card from the modeling, bring it, bring a copy of it, and then change the settings as you see fit for it to be the new texture of that table. Uh, so I am going to bring in a grade node and a saturation node because I believe this blood splatter is way too powerful. So I'm going to use um, the shuffle, sorry, the, the tab, and I'm going to put the saturation node. I'm going to just slightly desaturate this red because it's just way too much powerful. So I, I put, put dot uh, nine on saturation. And I'm going to bring in a grade node, again using the tab, and put a grade node. And in my grade node, I am going to basically uh, bring the, the gamma down, the multiply down, or, or better, the highlights. So I'm going to bring it all the way down to 20 something. Uh, and my midtones also need to go down because we do need to have it looking like it's almost like a dry blood. Um, I don't want it to look like fluorescent blood because that's what it was looking like. So now we can actually look at the 3D system and see what's going on. So we now have a blood splatter where the table was. We just not need to orientate the card as we want. So I'm going to put the viewer into my merge node, switch to 2D, and now we have it in the table. So this is the only thing we need to do now is we need to orientate it and position it as we want. So I am going to basically, uh, well, I actually am pretty happy with this so far. So I think I am going to leave it. I'm just going to scrub a little and just see how it looks in different frames. Let's just start scrubbing it. It is a little small, so I am going to make it a little bigger. Now, we have two ways of making it bigger. And this is also something I wanted to show you. We could, of course, go into the card and make it bigger and smaller, but the card is already like perfectly drawn into the table. 
So we have a problem if we start scaling it too much. If, for example, if I start scaling it too much, what's going to happen is that it's actually going to go off the table. We don't want that. We actually want the blood to be cut by the table. So instead of scaling the actual 3D card, what I'm going to do is to show you that you can actually scale the texture inside the card. And you can do so by actually bringing in a transform node before it becomes a 3D card. So I'm going to select the pre-mold and I'm going to hit the tab button again. I'm going to bring in the transform node. And that transform node, as you can see, is going to scale the texture inside the card. So for example, if I now decide to scale this all the way up, it always gets cut by the 3D card because the 3D card is the limit of the texture because it is actually the geometry limit of everything. So that's the, the good thing with using a transform node whenever you want to actually make sure your texture is scaled and moved inside a geometry. As you can see also, you can also uh, move it around and it will stay in perspective. So if I move it up, or if I move it down, I'm going to just bring it to full screen here so you can see. So it does behave like a 3D, a 3D transformation, but in reality what's happening is that if I go in here and I put my viewer into my transform, I am basically going to, I'm just moving the texture in inside the limit of the full HD format, which means when I move it up, it's only covering a section of the top of the table. So now if I put the viewer to my 3D, you can see that it's only on the top of the table. Or if I move it down, it's on the bottom of the table. So I am going to then start by uh, going into my transform. I'm going to rotate it because I'm not too happy how it looks. I'm going to rotate it something like that. And I'm going to scale it a little lower. I think that's way too much. Uh, I'm also going to move it uh, a little to the front of the screen. We just need to make sure that we bring in the actual photo frame uh, geometry and use it to cut this texture. So I'm going to go in and go into my modeling section and I'm going to copy my photo frame. Now I am actually going to pipe it in into the scene. So once you do that, nothing happens because at this moment my card doesn't have any texture. So for example, if I would put a checkerboard, ah, there we go, now we have it. So as you can see, my checkerboard is now cutting the texture, but we don't want that. We don't want the blood to be uh, cut with the checkerboard. We want to actually make the card photo frame to cut the texture and not leave a black hole. So for those situations, we can use uh, a material called fill mat. The fill mat is actually found on the 3D uh, section and it's inside the uh, shading uh, tab of the 3D. It's called fill mat, and the fill mat is basically just an alpha channel operation. So I'm going to click the fill mat, and I'm going to plug it in into the input of the photo frame. Now what's going to happen is that the, this card now will punch a hole in whatever we have as the texture of the blood. So if I don't have it, you can see that the blood goes on top of the photo frame, and this way it just gets cut. If I look at the at the alpha channel, you can see that what's happening is that the the fill mat operation is actually behaving like uh, alpha. So as you can see, by looking at the alpha channel, the blood splatter is all over the place. If I enable the card, it's get cut. Now at this stage, uh, I think I'm going to leave up to you to put the extra blood. So. Uh, I'm going to bring in uh, some of the extra bits of blood that I've already put in into the scene. So I've put a drop of blood in the photo. I've put a drop of blood in the chair as well. So now it's playing. So as you can see, it is pretty stable uh, and nothing is sliding. The blood splatters work very well in the scene. 